If you're in the market for a new computer monitor, I ask you to watch this video because I think I can convince you that this one might just be the best one, especially if you use a Mac, because you essentially have two monitor choices, the Apple Studio Display, which is a great monitor, but is incredibly expensive, or something else. And that something else category comes with a lot of compromises that a non-Apple monitor has, such as no Thunderbolt connectivity, scaling issues within Mac OS, or just plain awful build quality. Or does it? Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you'd know I often recommend the UltraSharp lineup from Dell for both Windows and obviously Mac users. Now it has a great one cable laptop connectivity, uh, port selection, screen quality, and a lot of really cool features at a pretty affordable price. But this year in the 2024 update, it's received a few very interesting upgrades like Thunderbolt 4 connectivity, a new resolution option, and a 120 hertz high refresh rate. A uh, quick note before we get into it, all the monitors you see in this video were purchased with my own money. Uh, Dell or Apple or whoever has had no input. There is a sponsor, NordPass, and they help me fund this channel and all of the monitors I keep buying, uh, but more on that later. Okay, so this is the Dell UltraSharp U2724DE, and here's a quick design and build quality rundown first. The monitor is made primarily from plastic to keep costs down, but it doesn't really squeak or flex too much when I'm moving it around. You do get a really impressive amount of stand adjustability though, up and down, side to side swivel, pivot, and also portrait mode. So no complaints there. Just bear in mind the cable management hole is placed too low, so cables are easily visible. Otherwise it does have a standard visa mount on the back, so you can just you know, mount it to pretty much any monitor arm out there. Here's the one I've been using for a while and can thoroughly recommend. I'll link it in the description. It also has the usual ultra sharp brand, minimal light gray and silver color scheme and tiny bezels with no branding on the front bottom bezel, which is refreshing to see. There is one on the stand though. Quick side note, these bezels are actually way thinner than the Apple Studio display. I thought that was funny considering the price difference. Moving on to ports, the U2724DE is primarily designed to be used with laptops, and it's essentially a two-in-one device, a monitor and a desktop dock. So if you're thinking of buying maybe a separate dock and just a normal monitor and using them together, you could save a fair bit of money by just getting this monitor instead, which is kind of like an all-in-one. Now the included Thunderbolt 4 USB-C cable connects your laptop, either Mac or Windows, to the monitor and provides up to 90 watts of charging. It also outputs an image to the screen and also lets you access devices connected to the monitor via the huge port selection on the back. From left to right, there's HDMI and DisplayPort 1.4 in case you wanna connect other computers, a DisplayPort out, a Thunderbolt 4 downstream port for daisy chaining other devices like a second monitor without having to plug the monitor directly into your computer, the main Thunderbolt 4 upstream port that provides video data and charging to your laptop, and then a variety of USB-A and USB-C ports, all with super speed 10 gigabit per second speeds, and even an ethernet port. It's not just your standard gigabit port either, it's 2.5 gigabit, so you can directly attach a NAS or something like that. Note there's also no built-in speaker, but there is an audio line out port. So yeah, a crazy amount of ports, and personally, I have never seen so many ports in a monitor before. So why is this such a big deal? Well, we've all usually got a number of things that need to be plugged into our laptop, right? So instead of desktop docks or you know dongles hanging off the side of the laptop, everything can just be plugged into the monitor itself. So USB, Bluetooth receivers for keyboards and mice, uh, ethernet, hard drive, speakers, you name it. There's also two quick access ports on the bottom. Uh, they provide up to 15 watts of power delivery, which is great for charging accessories. My only real complaint here is that all of these ports can be a little tricky to access if you're just sitting at your desk and you know, trying to plug different devices in all the time. Now, you don't have to have a Thunderbolt 4 laptop to use this monitor, but if your laptop supports Thunderbolt 4 and you connect it via the appropriate port, uh, there's really no speed or bandwidth bottleneck. Thunderbolt 4 has a 40 gigabits per second bi-directional bandwidth. So even if I have multiple fast SSDs connected with 
10 gigabit per second speeds, uh, you know, an ethernet connection downloading a huge file and outputting a 1440p image at 120 hertz. It's almost certainly not enough to saturate that bandwidth. I also wanted to test out how some really fast external SSDs behave when they're attached directly to the monitor. So I plugged my super fast Sabrent external SSD both directly into my MacBook Pro and then into the Thunderbolt 4 downstream port on the monitor. You'll notice the write speed is about 30% slower when the SSD is connected through the monitor, but the read speed is nearly identical, which for me is more important. The second reason why these ports are so powerful is that there's an auto KVM switch built into the monitor. So if you have a dual Mac and PC setup, for example, as soon as you change the display input, everything plugged into the ports on the back of the monitor, like your keyboard or mouse dongle, for example, automatically connects to whatever computer you're currently using. There's no need to fiddle around unplugging devices or switching stuff manually. Now I did find one negative here and that's the way that the KVM switch slash hub works. Uh, it's kind of like a light switch. If you switch to a different computer, everything disconnects from the original computer and switches over to the other computer. So if you're using the ethernet port in the back or have an SSD plugged in, the original computer loses access to it. There's no sharing. It's either one or the other. Now, while we're on the topic of sharing, are you using a password manager? Because if you're not, you could end up being one of the 11 people every single second that falls victim to a cyber attack. And that's where the sponsor for this section of the video comes in, NordPass, a powerful password manager, which is the ultimate solution when it comes to digital security. Because remembering all of your passwords is nearly impossible and using the same password for multiple accounts is an almost guaranteed way to eventually get hacked. With NordPass, you can store all your passwords, pass keys, credit card details, and other sensitive information in one place. You can also use the built-in password generator to create complex and secure passwords at the click of a button. Then when logging in, NordPass automatically fills in your login details and you can access your NordPass data on an unlimited number of devices. NordPass is also a zero knowledge password manager, so no one can see or access what's in your encrypted vault. You'll also be immediately notified if your passwords or credit card information has been leaked and where with the data breach scanner. So visit nordpass.com slash createdtech or use the code on screen to claim the best NordPass deal with a 30 day money back guarantee. Okay, let's get back to the monitor. Now, if you remember in my video about last year's ultra sharp monitor, uh, Dell completely overhauled both the menu buttons and the menu system. It's now a controlled joystick and you can also add shortcuts to quickly change brightness or select a different input. It's not fancy, but you know, it works and it gets the job done. However, this year's version of the UltraSharp has a few changes to the screen. Now, when you're ordering it on the Dell website, there are two resolution options, QHD, otherwise known as 1440p and 4K. If you select QHD, that's this year's version, the U2724DE with Thunderbolt 4 and 120 Hertz. Now for Mac users specifically, this is actually a really interesting change because all the previous versions of this monitor have been 4K, which although does give you more pixels and sharpness overall, because it doesn't scale perfectly within the macOS operating system, you'll notice a little bit of blurriness in UI elements and text. More on that here if you wanna learn more about the way macOS scales. 1440p or QHD on the other hand, scales perfectly within macOS. And as a result, I found that in terms of sharpness and text clarity, there's surprisingly less of a difference than you'd think between 1440p and 4K when using macOS specifically. Uh, Windows doesn't suffer from this issue and works perfectly at either resolution. Now, the obvious advantage here is that the lower 1440p resolution also comes with a 120 hertz refresh rate versus just 60 hertz on a 4K version. Now, if you have a MacBook Pro like I do with a 120 hertz ProMotion screen uh, and you're using that on your desk and also with an external monitor, both refresh rates are now perfectly matched. And this is actually really nice because I personally find it really jarring to go from a high refresh rate screen uh, to a lower one. You just really notice the way scrolling feels rough and jagged and even the cursor movement. If you want to learn more about why I love using high refresh rate monitors with my Mac, check out this video. Now this higher refresh rate also comes in helpful if you do any gaming. Now this is certainly not a proper gaming monitor, 
by any means. It only has a maximum of five milliseconds response time, of course, after you go into the settings and change from the default eight milliseconds. And that 120 Hertz refresh rate isn't really that impressive when it comes to even the most entry-level gaming monitors out there. But for casual gaming outside of your mainly productivity-based workflow, it's fine. For example, you can just use the built-in hub to have your laptop and a gaming system like a gaming console or gaming PC also attached. And you can just use the same keyboard and mouse without having to unplug and change cables. Again, it's a great option for those who mainly do productivity stuff on their Mac, but also have a Windows machine for a bit of gaming on the side. Now, in terms of color, the U2724DE has an almost identical display as the one I reviewed last year, the U2723QE. Without going into too much technical jargon, which I know is really boring, uh, when I tested the U2724DE, I found it has almost identical color accuracy to the much more expensive Apple Studio display with 100% of sRGB and Rec. 709 and 98% of DCI P3 coverage. This makes this monitor an excellent choice for any color based work like photo or video editing. Just note that unlike the Studio display, Dell does not offer a glossy panel option. Every monitor ships with an anti-glare coating as standard. Found it works pretty well for reflections, but I also know some people, including myself, just prefer those glossy panels. There's also the same IPS black technology that Dell introduced previously that doubles the contrast ratio to 2000 to one for darker blacks. It's not super noticeable in my experience, uh, definitely nowhere as good as an OLED panel, for example. I'd say it's maybe about 20 to 30% darker, but only in relevant dark scenes. You just can't squeeze much more out of an LCD panel because there's that big old backlight shining at the back. Speaking of, I didn't notice any major backlight bleed on my panel. Viewing angles are also pretty good. Not that it matters because you'll ideally be sitting right in front of your computer monitor. The brightness is also pretty good for most situations, uh, unless you've located the monitor so that a really bright light source shines directly onto it, like uh, you know afternoon sunlight from a window, for example. So let's talk price. At the time of making this video, the U2724DE retails for $489 directly on Dell's website or $444 on Amazon. I'll provide links down below to all the best prices I could find because there's often some pretty big sales going. In terms of competitors, there are your typical 4K USB-C monitors such as Dell's U2723QE, the one I mentioned before, that have similar connectivity, form factor and panel. But no Thunderbolt 4 and only 60 Hertz for about the same price. LG also has a similar version, the 27 inch ultra fine range, which is a bit cheaper, but it usually comes with correspondingly less features. There's also the Apple Studio display, incredible build quality, has good connectivity and speakers and webcam built in, but it's $15.99 and doesn't play nice with those who also run Windows. Or you could just buy a standard 1440p monitor for around 200 bucks with no hub connectivity, worse colors and features, no KVM, and then source a hub and KVM switch separately, or maybe you already have them. So when you lay all of these options out, the U2724DE actually starts looking quite good, especially if your setup is primarily macOS based or if you run Windows alongside your Mac computer. But overall, this is an extremely solid monitor. Uh, that port connectivity on the back is just phenomenal. Uh, and the fact that you can just plug your laptop in with one cable, get access to all of that, you know, 90 watts of charging, you know, 120 hertz refresh rate, it's almost perfectly matched for Mac OS, right? Like it just works so well with MacBooks. And if you've made it this far, I do also recommend checking out my full review of Dell's 4K 60 Hertz version, the U2723QE, and see how it compares to this one I featured in this video and maybe which one you should potentially buy.